Hello everyone, this is Brenda Hipsher with x -Rite Photo. Thank you all for coming to this webinar on Color Monkey Photo and Display, the Color Monkey family of color management solutions for photographers by x -Rite. Today we're going to talk about each of these solutions in great detail. We're going to do some software demos uh, and get you some answers and clarity on which of these solutions is the right Color Monkey solution for you. Now, in the beginning, there was Color Monkey Photo. Introduced several years ago, Color Monkey Photo continues uh, to be an advanced spectral photometer in the marketplace, allowing you to color manage monitor, projector, and printer using one easy to carry device. And now, Color Monkey Photo includes camera calibration software and a mini color checker classic to get you started with DNG camera profiles. Color Monkey Photo has often been referred to as Color Monkey, but now it's important to be clear about calling it Color Monkey Photo because there's a new kid in town. Color Monkey Display was introduced in mid 2011. Color Monkey Display is a completely redesigned colorimeter that replaced i1 Display 2 and i1 Display LT. In addition to calibration and profiling monitors, this redesigned colorimeter also profiles digital projectors. Both Color Monkey Display and Color Monkey Photo are current products in the line and are different kinds of instruments. Color Monkey Display is a colorimeter. Color Monkey Photo is a spectral photometer. Both solutions are supported for the latest operating systems including Mountain Lion from Apple, and both are uniquely suited depending on your needs. The Color Monkey family is for the person who wants an advanced instrument using wizard-driven software, an easy-to-use solution that gives them high-quality profiles. There are some similarities and some differences in what these two solutions provide, so it's really important to understand how they're different so that you can decide which color monkey is the right color monkey for your needs. Let's take a bit more in-depth look at each of these solutions beginning with color monkey display. X-Rite Pantone's next generation colorimeter delivers unrivaled color accuracy, repeatability, and device longevity. It is completely redesigned with a new optical system the larger lens array allows for measurements with less mistakes and skewed results. New filter technology that allows the instrument to perform better and last longer. Spectral calibration architecture performed at the factory for better intra-instrument agreement, particularly in environments where multiple instruments are used. This new spectral photometer supports modern LCD display technologies, including CCFL, white LED, RGB LED, and wide gamut displays. Color Monkey Display supports projector profiling in addition to monitors. And this little monkey has an intelligent form factor that utilizes an elegant and space saving design, making it the perfect travel companion. Now let's go to a live demo of the software and take a look at Color Monkey Display software. The first thing you'll notice here is that you have Profile My Display and Profile My Projector. These are your two options with Color Monkey Display. And before we go in depth in either of those, I want to show you the preference panel. It's located right here under Color Monkey Display and here's what is located in the preferences panel. Profile settings for the tone response curve or gamma setting. 2.2 is default now for Macintosh and for Windows machines, but you do have the option of 1.8 for those situations where 1.8 is more applicable. You also have the, the choice of two versions of ICC profiles uh, here, version 2 and version 4. Version 2 are the older, more compatible profiles. Version 4 are the more robust, newer profiles. 
in the event that you have a situation where everything on your computer looks great except for maybe one program or everything looks fine on one monitor but the other monitor is hard to profile, default this to version 2. You may be experiencing a version conflict. This box right here, Achieve Display Luminance Value Using Video LUTs, allows you to literally push down the luminance value on monitors that can't be physically, mechanically turned down enough to be used as photographic editing monitors. So for some of the older iMacs and other monitors that physically can't be, the luminance can't be reduced enough to be used for editing uh, photography, this little checkbox right here will allow the software to push the, the luminance down uh, using the video LUTs. Now on display settings here you're going to notice enable ADC is checked. I have two monitors attached to my computer and both is set for enable ADC. ADC is called automatic display control in the Color Monkey display product and what it allows the software to do is literally talk to the protocols inside the monitor and allows the software to make changes in contrast and luminance that will calibrate the monitor before the profiling process starts. You'll notice here that this software supports several different current monitor technology types. CCFL, which is the most widely used, wide gamut CCFL, which you find in some uh, higher end, uh, wider gamut displays, white LED, there's a lot of those out there now uh, in some of the Apple displays and other LED displays. RGB LED, not nearly as prevalent, uh, but a few out there, and uh, projectors, uh, also very important to differentiate. This, these monitor technology types are also upgradable in future software releases when as new technologies arrive on the scene. Okay, so let's have a look at the display profiling process uh, in ColorMonkey Display. The first thing we see when we click here is a screen that gives us an overview of where we are in the process. It tells us everywhere we're going to go before we actually go there. It tells us what steps are going to be taken in the process so that we have control of knowing where we are at all times. If at any time we want to return to the home screen, we simply press the home button and OK to leave the wizard and we go right back to home. The other thing that's built in here are help files. So on every screen you have help files uh, that allow you to get important information about the particular screen that you're on. And if you have two monitors attached, as I do, then you'll need to choose which monitor you're going to profile. If the window of the software happens to be on the other monitor, when you choose it, it will simply move over to the correct monitor. This is the correct way to profile rather than manually moving the window. Select the monitor here that you'd like to profile when multiple monitors are attached. Today I'm going to profile the color LCD, the primary display that I'm working off of for this presentation. On our next screen here we've got choose display profiling mode you'd like to use. There's an easy mode and an advanced mode. In the easy mode we move directly into the profiling process, the calibration and profiling process. The ADC is turned on in the preferences. Uh, a feature called ambient light smart control will also be turned on and another new feature called flare correct will be turned off in easy mode. If it's the first time you're profiling your display if you want to get through it quickly and easily and get a very close uh, monitor calibration and profile, just click the easy button and next and off you go. If you'd like to have a little more control over the process, you can click advanced and see all the settings that are available. So for instance, we can set the white point to D50, D55, D65, which is recommended, or native, which is what we would use for projectors. And we'll talk about that a little more in detail later on. For white luminance, you can have the device actually determine the optimum luminance level for your display based on the ambient light conditions where I view my printed output. 
So if you have a viewing booth, for instance, or you have an area that has corrected light with the correct luminance to view prints, then you may want to take a reading, an ambient light reading with the device to determine what your monitor luminance should be to match that print output. For most of us, what we'll do is we would set the display luminance to a specific value. Now the software comes defaulted to 120, but I'm going to recommend to you that you probably want to start about 100. You would need to be in a very bright, very, very bright room to be able to support 120 luminance. Now what happens when your luminance is too high, when your brightness of your computer is too bright, is you make your files darker before you send them to the lab. And then what do you get back from the lab? Dark prints. This is the most common complaint that I hear from folks when talking about color management other than the color just being completely off, is my prints are too dark. To avoid that, what we'll do is take control of the luminance here, either with by taking a measurement or by putting the luminance setting down about 100. If you're in a very dim situation, you may want to go down as low as 90 or even 80. But starting at 100 is probably a good place to start. Now the next screen shows the advanced options that I mentioned before. The ambient light smart control allows one to continue to monitor the light after the profile is made and applied. These little movies that are built into the system show us exactly what these features entail. If you have a viewing booth, low room light, and a shield uh, over a display hood over your monitor, you're all good. But a lot of us work with poor lighting, light spilling onto our display, harsh overhead lighting, and windows where the lighting is changing all day. If this is the case, then ambient light smart control can be of help because the ambient light sensor sits on your desk all day long and tells you when the light has changed enough that it needs to be used. For this demonstration, I'm going to turn this one off because we're in a controlled lighting situation. This option called Flare Correct is, uh, talks about light falling on the surface of your display. This allows the device to be pulled off the display for about 12 inches at the end of the profiling process and take a measurement of the flare or glare, the reflections on your glossy screens. So let me just give you a, a look at that. Of course we're talking about recommended lighting conditions and we understand that those recommended lighting conditions are not always possible or feasible. And so if you're working without a display hood, you may see the contrast dim on your screen as you saw there from the glare and flare on the glossy screens. And this is showing that the, the device will be pulled at the end of the process, and I'll show you this in just a few minutes, off the surface of the monitor for a reading 12 inches away from the surface of the monitor. This device is revolutionary and unique in the way that it is able to take a measurement off the surface of the monitor. It's a very important new innovation in this particular device. Now as we move into the profiling process, you'll notice here that the device is aware that it is not in the proper position to take the ambient light measurement that it wants to see. So it tells you to pull up on the top uh, a piece of the device and swing it around to cover the lens so that you set it on the desktop as you see here. And everywhere you'll notice through the whole piece of software you have these little movies that show you exactly what to do. Pull up, turn it over, sit it on the top, uh, make sure that it's not in light spilling over, make sure that the light from the monitor is not adversely affecting it, have it not under the monitor so that it's in shadow, really where it's out in just a constant ambient light setting where you'll be judging prints. And again, if you have a viewing booth, put that ambient light sensor in the viewing booth. So we'll take a measurement here and you'll notice that the room's ambient light level is 321 lux. Again, 
the ambient diffuser is now covering the lens. So the software is asking us to rotate the ambient diffuser to the back so that the lens is now exposed and the device is hung over the monitor using the counterweight to hold it on the back. And when I hit next, you're going to see another screen here that says, for accurate results, please ensure your device is completely flat against the monitor. Now, once you're used to this process, you have a box here to click so that it doesn't show again. I've left it on here to illustrate it to you. Now, at the bottom of the screen, you're going to see X-Ray ADC. Automatic Display Control is now optimizing the luminance of your display. And you'll begin to see the display darken and lighten, the contrast increase and decrease. As the monitor profiling process begins, the ADC, the Automatic Display Control, reads the internal protocols in the monitor it's profiling and begins to take measurements make adjustments, and then take additional measurements as part of the process of calibrating the contrast and luminance for your monitor. This iterative process is part of what makes X-Rite Color Monkey Solutions unique in the industry. Iteration is a process of making adjustments and producing additional color patches based on the previous measurements. This iterative process allows for a very exacting kind of measurement using fewer patches and therefore taking less time. Notice the feedback from the software again at the bottom of the page letting us know that we're in the initial ADC measurement phase of the measurement sequence. Once this initial contrast and luminance calibration is complete, the color patches will begin to flash and the feedback will change at the bottom of the page. So to keep us from having to sit here through the whole color patch process, I'm going to switch now off of the live display and onto some screen captures that I've prepared for you so that you can see what the rest of the color calibration profiling process looks like on Color Monkey Display. Notice that you can cancel the process at any time once you reach this phase and there's a real-time indicator here letting you know that what to expect time-wise. So now that we know that we have about five minutes remaining uh, in the process, we can go get a cup of coffee, uh, check our email on another machine, uh, make a phone call, whatever we need to do uh, for this short five-minute time period that it takes to run the profiling process. Once that's complete, if you've activated Flare Correct, on the opening screens, you will now see this image. Again, remember we talked about taking a measurement approximately 12 inches off the face of the computer. The screen tells you to remove the instrument about that distance and take that one more reading. This reading accounts for the flare or glare reflecting from your monitor, especially good for rooms with less than ideal light and for glossy monitors. Once we click the Measure button, we see a black screen appear. The instrument should be 12 inches off the screen. And the progress bar below tells us how long this black screen will be here. It's a very short measurement time uh, to make this measurement to account for glare or flare. Once that is complete, you see the green check mark here that says Profile Complete. We have the option to change the name of the profile here and then we hit save. On this screen we also have the option to set a reminder to reprofile this display every week, two weeks, or month. And we can also leave it turned off if we prefer. My suggestion to you is to set this for every month and to use this reminder to keep your display really well calibrated and profiled. Once we've saved the profile, we have a before and after option here and there are several uh, images in the software that allow you to evaluate the profile or you can add your own custom image and look at the before and after comparison. 
just a note here if you ever see this screen your computer is not connecting properly to your color monkey display on some uh, Apple computers and some other kinds of computers the USB power ratios are not the same from power port to power port so on tower machines always use either a powered hub or the back one of the back USB ports if you get this error message always check another USB port to make sure that the problem is not originating inside the USB power output on your USB port that you happen to be using. So let's review Color Monkey Display. It's a redesigned colorimeter that manages monitors and projectors. It's small, lightweight, and easy to carry when traveling. The solution if you do not need or want to do printer profiling. As we said before, Color Monkey Photo is a full featured spectral photometer. Color Monkey Photo also calibrates and profiles your desktop and laptop monitors and profiles your digital projectors. Because it's a spectral photometer, Color Monkey Photo ha also has the ability to produce paper profiles tailored to your paper, ink, and printer combinations, in addition to creating the profiles for monitors and digital projectors. Color Monkey Photo continues to be an innovative color management solution that now includes camera calibration software and a mini Color Checker Classic Target that gets you started making custom camera profiles in addition to monitor, projector, and printer profiles. Color Monkey Photo software is also wizard driven and easy to use. It is very similar in the look of its interface to the Color Monkey display software. It is not the same software for the two devices. However, let's take a look at how similar the two Color Monkey softwares are. Let's look at Color Monkey Photo software. So again, I'm going to switch off to a live demo of the software now. The first thing I've left open here is the welcome uh, screen on the Color Monkey Photo. This will take you directly to uh, information that is uh, housed on the internet uh, that will uh, give you all kinds of uh, background information that you need uh, to learn what you want to know about a Color Monkey Photo. So that's why I left this uh, screen up for you. Now again, you have, I'm going to close this right now. So you have right here, getting started with Color Monkey Photo, sharing your images with Digital Pouch, using Photo Color Picker, basics of managing color. I'm going to show you these two uh, software packages in just a very uh, brief encounter. Uh, and when you get your Color Monkey Photo, you'll be able to go through uh, these uh, training sessions these informational sessions and when you register your color monkey photo you also get a complete training uh, program in addition to all the great resources that we have already on X-Rite Photo. Color monkey photo preferences are located right in the same place. You have profile uh, display profile settings and printer profile settings now on color monkey photo because you have the printer Cali uh, pro calibrate printer profiling option uh, because it is a spectral photometer. Note that you can change your tone response curve from 2.2 to 1.8 if the need arises. I do not recommend this, but if you have a special need, you do have the option. You can also change the ICC profile version to those more compatible V2 profiles on both display and printer profile settings if you so choose. You can enable the DDC, it's the ADC, uh, it's called ADC on the Color Monkey display and DDC on the Color Monkey photo. It actually functions in a very similar way, uh, controlling the internal processes of your monitor for luminance and contrast uh, by uh, the software uh, actually talking to your monitor. And again, that all important achieve display luminance value using video LUTs, all found in the preferences panel. 
Now, you notice that there's more on the, the first screen, the opening screen of the Color Monkey Photo because the Color Monkey Photo not only performs more uh, tasks because it's a spectral photometer rather than a colorimeter, but it also has two extra pieces of software built right into it. So let me get this out of the way so it's not distracting and let's have a look at the digital pouch. The digital pouch allows you to actually drag images into the uh, the pouch, and I'll do that here while I'm talking with you. Drag images into the pouch one at a time uh, and produce uh, a small uh, uh, file, a contained file. Uh, it's called a .jar file. Uh, it's almost like a, uh, a zip file, it in, but it's not compressed. It puts all the photos into this viewer. Uh, and allows you to email, for instance, one file or upload just one file uh, into uh, so that to share with someone else. Uh, how you do that is you pull your files in there. To save the file, we just click right here on this Save Digital Pouch icon. Choose where we'd like to save the file. And I'm going to put it right on our desktop, and I'll call this one Test. It says that the pouch was created successfully. So we're going to clear the images. We're going to close the digital pouch. And then we're going to look at the file that's right here on our desktop. This is a file that you can now email to a friend or business associate. It has the viewer built right in. They pull it right onto their desktop from the email, open it up, and without any software installation required on their machine, the digital pouch will open on their machine and this is what they see. Now you'll notice down here I've left my display today uncalibrated so that in the view safe area if their display it does not have a custom calibration attached to it then uh, they will see this red X down here. That way you can ask them or they can tell you that we're not sure if what they're seeing on their screen is what you intend them to see. It may be close, it may be far away, but if a red X is here, it's not profiled. If we get a green check mark, then of course we're calibrated and profiled and ready to go. So that's the value of Digital Pouch. Now let's briefly look at Photo Color Picker. Photo Color Picker is a piece of design software that I've actually sold Color Monkeys for people who literally want it predominantly for this piece of software. So I'll just illustrate here using some of the collections. There's some beautiful photographs that are embedded into the software here as a demonstration uh, so that you can see how it works. The software pulls out uh, the color palette color patches that illustrate the color palette uh, that you're seeing in a particular photograph uh, right here at the bottom. Once we select any one of those colors, then uh, things populate over here on the side. And I'm going to choose just a little more vibrant color uh, so that you can really get an idea of what happens here. The first we see is the harmony colors, the monochromatic, the analogous, the split complements, triadic, and complement colors. These are very helpful tools to use for designing web pages, uh, type uh, colors, uh, matte colors, uh, any number of ways that we need to use color in connection with a photograph. Then we have the variations on the particular color that we've chosen and similar colors uh, to that color. So the, we also have up here lab values and the sRGB values of this particular color. And you can see it change as we change uh, different colors. Now, once we attach our Color Monkey photo, we also see the Color Monkey photo appear in this software.
So the device has been found, and here's the color monkey photo. So why would we want to have that? Well, we might want to take measurements of specific spot colors and see what we have. The first thing that we're going to need to do is calibrate. So I'm going to put the device into the position to calibrate the device. The calibration check plaque is located inside the device right here. And so when we move the large dial into this position pointing toward the calibration check plaque and depress this button right here, then the device begins its calibration process. Well, once it's calibrated, uh, then we'll be able to take spot measurements of pretty much anything we want to take spot measurements of. Alright, so the calibration process is complete. Our view measurements window is available. Now I've prepared some screenshots here just to show you. This is part of the one of the movies that's available uh, right there at the beginning to show you that there's a button just in the back of the bottom of the color monkey here, the color monkey spectrophotometer, that once it's slid to the other side, just slid back and forth, it causes this little picker, this little foot to come down uh, from the color monkey photo. That, color, that little foot has a scoop out right here that you can see, and that's where the color monkey photo is going to take the measurement for the color picker software. Then you just depress it down so that it's flat onto the color and press the button and there you go. You can take your measurement. So I'm going to do that in this in my own environment here just to show you what it looks like when it comes in. So I move the large dial back down to uh, the uh, uh, pointed down so that the sensor is taking a measurement. And there we go. We have our first measurement. I'll just uh, measure the green on the top of my legal pad. And I'll measure the red on the shirt that I'm wearing. And I'll even measure the purple on a notepad that I have on my desk. And what the heck, how about a CD cover? There we go. So now we have a color palette of things that we've measured. We can also select these colors, move them right into projects, and now they become active so that we can choose the colors we just measured and get the same outputs over here for harmony, Again, the monochromatic, analogous, split complement, and so forth, the variations, and the similar. So there's a lot of uses for the color picker software, a lot more uses that you'll discover, I'm quite sure. Uh, but for now, I'll just give you that brief look at it and let you play with it when you have your own color monkey photo there in your house. Now, you'll notice here that you have three buttons, match my printer to my display, Profile my display and profile my printer. This, there's nothing magic about this button. It simply cascades one thing into the other, one module into the other. So it starts with the printer profile, goes to the display profile. It basically is just calibrating and profiling both your printer and your monitor. So for this demonstration, I'm going to choose uh, monitor calibration and uh, I'm going to choose uh, color LCD uh, again. And once we get to this uh, stage, it's going to ask me if it's an LCD, a laptop, or a projector. Now, this is very similar to the Color Monkey display. The Color Monkey photo does not have the ambient light smart control built in, nor does it have the flare correct. These are two features that are specific to the Color Monkey display and its particular uh, device architecture. However, the process of making the measurements using the DDC, the automatic display control, uh, is very similar. For this demonstration, I want to take a look quickly at the projector module in the advanced mode. And I want to point out to you that when you are profiling projectors, use a target white point for the display that is native. This was confusing to me and I literally called up an engineer and said why do we do it this way? 
we set the white points on our monitors to D65, but we set the white point on projectors to native. Well, the reality is we're not using a projector to match to a print. We're using a projector in a dim room showing people our photographs. And so if the white point is off just a little bit, our eyes will tend to correct that out. That's the real reason why we need to have monitor calibration and profiling software and, and hardware in the first place. Our eyes kind of shift and see what they want to see. Having a projector that's just ever so slightly off on a white point is absolutely preferable to having a projector that's ever so slightly dimmer. So what we want to always do is make sure we have the maximum luminance out of our projectors and that's why we profile to native rather than D65. Now I will tell you absolutely that I have been in situations where particular projectors are so far off in their luminance uh, white point that I have profiled to D65 uh, and had a better result. But in general, use native. So since we went through the uh, monitor profiling process in ColorMonkey Display, I'm going to concentrate for this demonstration on the printer module. So again, you can go to home, get right back to the main screen anytime you want to get there. So, once we get to profile my printer, again, very similar to the ColorMonkey Display software in that it tells us exactly where we're going and exactly where we are. In this situation, we want to create a new printer profile. We're going to choose uh, my uh, desktop uh, Epson printer here, and we're going to say that we are profiling uh, a glossy surface of paper. And just hit Next. What's going to happen is the sheet is going to come up here showing you what target, what the target is going to look like when it's printed out on the printer. So this is the place where you hit print and then go to your printer dialog box and turn off color management, set your proper media settings and your proper resolution settings in your print dialog box and literally print your target. So at this point, again, to keep you from having to wait for me to enter all the data, uh, I'm going to switch up back to the um, prepared uh, slides that I have for you. This is the target that's going to be printed out uh, from the software. Uh, it is a single page target. It is uh, five lines of 10 patches each, so it's 50 patches on a page, and we're going to hand scan them in. It's very easy to do. Uh, it's very easy to accomplish. Uh, you're going to make sure that this is on white when it starts and on white when it ends, and you're holding this button as you run it through, and this is what it's going to look like when you're ready to scan. This marquee will be on the first row. Once you've scanned it, it will show that it's scanned, ready to go for the next one, and on and on each row. If a row happens to fail when we scan it, we get a red marquee. So we just wait to that for that to clear, and then rescan, and off we go. Once we have everything scanned in, this is what we see on the screen. We hit next, and the second chest test chart is generated based on the measurements that we took on the first chart. So remember when we talked about iterative profiling, what happens here is the first test chart is produced, the measurements are taken, and the software in it, it, it gives us a dynamically produced second target of another 50 patches. Those 50 patches, those second 50 patches, if you notice, look different to the first 50 patches. The first 50 patches are bright primary colors. The second target is always going to be the more subtle colors, the more muted colors, and it's going to be colors that are dynamically, iteratively produced by the software uh, to give the software the colors it needs to make the very best profile possible. So again, Here's what the second target looks like. 
we're going to uh, measure it just like we did before. Uh, what you're going to see after you print that second test chart is a about a 10 minute uh, test chart dry down. Uh, and this is just to give uh, the, it, you know, the test chart uh, time to uh, settle down just a little bit. Uh, most uh, good professional papers are going to come out of pigment inkjet printers uh, dry to the touch. But it's never a bad idea to give anything that's coming out of a printer 10 minutes. So, you know, go take a break, make a phone call, get a cup of coffee, and uh, come back. Uh, or if you're really in a hurry, you got the skip drying process here, and you can just go right on with it. Again, we're going to get this test chart. It's going to invite us to uh, uh, measure uh, the patches, and off we go. So I'm going to condense that just a little bit. When it's finished, it looks just like that. And at the end of it, you're going to have an opportunity to give that profile a, a more specific name. And here I've named one Color Monkey for my Stylus Pro 4800 uh, on Ilford Smooth Pearl. So that's my kind of naming convention. It, it has no bearing on anything. I just urge you to uh, come up with a naming convention that's logical for you so that you know uh, what to expect uh, from f when you try to find your profiles. And when you hit save, it's going to give you this progress bar that's going to run back and forth here, take just a few minutes to create that profile. So, we've now made a profile. What if we, uh, you know, we've only used two sheets of 50 patches. We've only measured 50 patches. And you're going to say, well, Brenda, how can you possibly get a really good monitor profile? Well, remember, that second set of patches was produced dynamically based on uh, the measurements from the first. But let's just say that we've got an image, and maybe some of the colors or some of the ranges that we want to uh, have uh, in the photo are just not producing quite as well as we'd like we can also iterate an existing profile. So we go back to optimize an existing profile, we choose a printer profile from our list, and we can load the exact image that we're having uh, out of gamma colors with uh, so that the software produces a particular color palette from that exact image that we've lo loaded into the software. We're going to print it, we're going to let it dry down for a few minutes. We're going to scan it uh, just like we did the other patches. Now our profile is tuned up even a little better. Now I was confused when Color Monkey Photo was first introduced. My question was, why do I want to do this? Because now I have a profile that's just specific to that particular image. And no, that's not true. What I have is a profile that's tuned up just a little bit better. You don't want to do this and waste the paper and ink unless you need to do it. But if you have out of gamma colors that are not producing with your profile as well as you would like them to, this is an option for you. This is an incredible option. So let's review Color Monkey Photo. Color Monkey Photo is a spectral photometer. It color manages monitors, projectors, and printers. So whereas the Color Monkey display is monitors and projectors only, because the Color Monkey Photo is a spectral photometer, it also gives us the option to color manage printers, paper, ink, and printer combinations that we use in our studio or office. And in addition to being a spectral photometer that profiles monitors, projectors, and printers, Color Monkey Photo now includes a mini color checker target, classic target, and camera calibration software, adding camera calibration to this suite. Camera calibration software is the same software that comes with Color Checker Passport. The Mini Color Checker Classic is the same 24 patch Color Checker Classic included in the Color Checker Passport and sold. it's also sold as a full size 8x10 target. Some people say it's the most photographed optic on earth because it's been the standard for color photography for 40 years. Remember, you'll need to be using a raw workflow in order to use the DNG camera profiles. This is the most used camera profiling system and allows you to begin your color managed workflow at the beginning at Capture. So which 
Color Monkey Family Solution is right for you? Well, the Color Monkey Family can be described this way. It's easy to use in both cases. Both cases, it's wizard-driven software, professional quality profiles with X-Rite dependability and at an affordable price. Color Monkey Display is a redesigned colorimeter that color manages monitors and projectors. It's small, lightweight, and easy to carry when traveling. Color Monkey Photo is a spectrophotometer that color manages monitors, projectors, and printers. It now includes camera profiling, making it an all-in-one solution. There's a color monkey for everybody. All you need to do is figure out which one you need. If you need to print, it's Color Monkey Photo. If it's monitors and projectors that you need and with an easy-to-carry solution, it's Color Monkey Display. It's easy. Isn't it time you stop guessing and start knowing? Thank you for attending this X-Rite presentation on Color Monkey Family. Remember to follow us on Twitter at x right Photo, like us at x right Photo on Facebook, and read the x right Photo blog at blog.xrightphoto.com. Visit www.xrightphoto.com for product information and more.